In today's show, I'm going to go through setting up an NBA fantasy basketball league. Michael Bolton. Thanks, Josh. It's Michael Bolton here, and it's time for another episode of the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast. Let's get to it. Let's get to it. Indeed. You are Locked On Fantasy Basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore Beeble and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Today's show is brought to you by Rock Auto. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit RockAuto.com and tell them that Locked On sent you. So... Let's really start to crack into the start of fantasy basketball season now. Summer League is ongoing. I'm not going to do day-by-day recaps. I think that's pretty pointless, but we will do. Uh, we will chat about Summer League stuff at some point in the coming weeks. But let's really start kicking things off with the 2021-2022 NBA Fantasy Basketball Draft Kit. And the first place to start is setting up a league. So for those of you who are commissioners, commissioners for the first time, long-time commissioners who want to know about you know ways to set up a league, different things you can do in setting up a league, what all the settings mean, the impacts that those things have, that's what we're going to talk about today. If you are looking for a league, and this is important as well. So this is yeah, the, the settings is more going to be for people who are commissioning leagues, and you can commission leagues. But there are plenty of people who are like, oh, I played in public leagues, and they're, they're shit house. Or I played in a league with my mates, and that's great, but only three of them paid attention, so it got boring. You know, I'll still play that, but I'm looking for something a little bit higher quality. I used to run a bunch of leagues, like about sixty or seventy different leagues, and in terms of commissioning them, it just got too much for me. But Good news is, is that Matt and Brendan from the uh, Fantasy Basketball International, they, uh, they haven't picked up the slack because they were doing it anyway, but they're expanding what they do. They run a bunch of dynasty leagues and they're running a bunch of redraft leagues as well. People who are massively into fantasy basketball, high quality leagues, draft only leagues, roto leagues, uh, category leagues, auction leagues, snake draft leagues, best ball leagues, a whole bunch of different stuff. The fantasy basketball world cup they have as well, which is a a huge thing to be a part of. So I'm going to put a link to fantasy basketball international to the sign up page to get involved in the best leagues that you can find. There will also be uh, pro leagues on fan tracks, pro leagues on Yahoo as well. But I highly recommend getting in these ones at Fantasy Basketball International. I cannot recommend it enough. I'm going to put the link there. But if you want to find it, go to uh, on Twitter at Hidden Upside is Brendan's uh, Twitter account. He's been on this podcast before. And the other um, the other guy, Matt, Matt Lawson, is NBA Dynasty ADP. Brendan handles more of the redraft stuff. Matt handles more of the uh, Dynasty stuff. But there, there will be links to how you can join to get involved in their leagues. They will run... 50 plus leagues, I'm guessing this year, maybe even 100 plus leagues this year. So that is the high quality leagues that I'm imagining many of you are trying to uh, trying to get your hands on or trying to get involved in. Uh, I will be in probably some draft only dynasty leagues and draft only redraft leagues over there. It's hard for me to be involved in too many leagues that have changes during the season just because of my job, of what I do. I just don't have the time at this point to you know, manage you know, 10, 20 different teams when I'm trying to manage projections for an entire league, but I will be involved in some of those leagues over there. There is no doubt about that. Now, why I'm going to go through the settings page and the setup page on Fantrax, which I do believe is the absolute best place to host a fantasy basketball league. I can't, I can't go through and show you how to set up a league on Yahoo because they're not open. Part of the, the great thing with Fantrax is the leagues never shut down. I don't know why leagues ever shut down, but on Yahoo, they shut down. So you can't go in and actually show how to set that up. But most of the settings, um, Fantrax has a lot more than Yahoo, but the settings that uh, Fantrax has will be applicable to Yahoo and to ESPN as well, which again is by far the worst of those three in terms of uh, hosting a fantasy basketball league. But there is something I do want to mention before we get into it. And I've been trying to play around with a points league setup because the standard point, look, you can have whatever sort of points league format you want. Like That's the thing. People will say, well, who do you like? This player in a points league. I don't know what your scoring is because unless you run with the standard Yahoo standard scoring system, and then even ESPN brought out their own standard scoring system just to make things even more confusing. Um, 
It's really hard to know how that all works out. And you know, when you look at the rankings for the Yahoo standard scoring and see that the number two player was Russell Westbrook and then the number 10 player was DeMontis Sabonis, it feels a little weird to me to have those guys as high as they are, to have no penalties for efficiency really at all, and just to really be you know, overwhelmed by points as the number one category. And those big volume numbers really making the, 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 biggest, the biggest impact there. So I set about while I was on my holiday, which is what you do, of course, when you're on holiday, to try and find a a way to get a points league that's a little bit more, I don't know if accurate is the right word, but takes into account some other things that are important in basketball. And the way that I did this is by looking at um, the PIPM, which you would have seen a few years ago, Jacob Goldstein, who created PIPM. It's an advanced metric. It's not publicly accessible anymore because Jacob got a job working for the Washington Wizards and Washington Mystics to do analytics there. So congratulations to Jacob. But as part of the LeBron metric, which is over at Basketball Index, they use some of the base of PIPM there as well. And in terms of the box score component of PIPM, it also has an on-off component and luck adjusting component to it as well. But the box score component... Uh, I tried to use some of the coefficients and the importance that they place on certain areas in terms of trying to create a points league format by using those coefficients and and the way that those sort of things were ranked in terms of importance in the PIPM formula to create a points league. So while the numbers look big, they look they're not round. So people hate things that aren't round or aren't even or aren't. So people hate that sort of shit for sure. Um, but when we're looking at a a scoring system, this is what I put out. This is what I tried. And and in the end, I was pretty happy with the overall results of how it all looked. So let's have a look at how that actually looked. So using those coefficients, points, one point equaled 35.7 points. Now you could easily make it one point equals 3.57, but most sites won't let you do two decimal places in terms of scoring. So I bumped everything up. 35.7, you could just make it 36 or you can make it 3.6, I guess, if you wanted to go that way. Offensive rebounds at 9.9 points. Defensive rebounds at 29 points. Again, you can ratio these however you like. Um, Assists at 40.9. Steals at 112. Blocks at 79.5. Turnovers at negative 89.4. Fouls, negative 9.7. Free throw attempts was a positive 4.8 because getting to the line is a key factor in being a positive basketball player. So every free throw attempt and your free throw rate, that's what that attempts to capture there. Minutes is negative 13.3, which I thought was very interesting is that players who just rack up box scores because they play tons of minutes get a slight penalty. It's not a huge penalty, but they get a slight penalty. And I think this also helps... For fantasy as well, is if your player's out there, then he gets hurt in you know, you know, 10 minutes in, that he he doesn't get punished uh, as much. He can still rack up some numbers and then doesn't get a big minutes penalty. So that, that's an interesting thing is that the more minutes, you get a slight penalty for that. Three-point attempts get negative 15.5, but when you contrast that to two-point attempts, it's negative 30.7. So this is taking into consideration efficiency. By each shot that you take, you lose some, but it's also um, taking into account the spacing effect, that if you are taking threes, even if they don't go in, it is more important than taking twos that miss because that spacing opens things up for everybody else. And then every win that your team gets gives you 152 points. So that was how that system, I came to that system. Now, in the end, what it does is the best player, which I'll show you who the top 10 players were. Giannis was uh, was number one on that list. Giannis and Tomatou. The and the numbers, the numbers are, they're huge. Like it's 637 points per game he averaged. But again, if we scale all those things down by a factor of 10, so he's averaging 64 fantasy points per game. Harden, Jokic, Embiid, Butler, Curry, Leonard, Durant, Lillard, Doncic. Now, the one that stands out to me as being a little bit off there is Butler. But Butler had a really, really strong season with his steal numbers in particular. Um, He was obviously really good in terms of generating assists as well, which helps him. He was very low foul, which helped him. He was pretty low turnovers as well, and his team won quite a bit. But yeah, he's probably the one that, that stands out as being the odd guy there. But someone like a Westbrook dropped down from number two to number 15 in this scenario. Sabonis so goes from 10 to 21. Um, a guy like Julius Randle, who was 14th in a standard uh, standard Yahoo scoring, he moves down to 45 because of inefficiency and defensive issues. 
So, yeah, that's how that all worked out. Some other names that stand out there, Le Rudy Gobert at number 11. Just, again, his impact on winning and defensively, I think, comes to the fore. LeBron was at number 12. You had uh, Clint Capella at 19 was an interesting one. Drew Holiday at 23. Trey Young at 24. I think, overall, the way that those numbers worked out looked okay. Again, I did them at a pretty high level in terms of those scores, but you could easily drop that down so that Giannis was scoring 64, or Harden was scoring 61, and Jokic 61, and Embiid 57, and Butler 56. That would all work out. So anyway, that was um, that was how I was uh, how I was looking at things going. If you're looking at getting things going for your car and you need parts, Rock Auto is the place to go. With the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all of the parts that you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to rockauto.com at home and in your pocket. Save time and money when using Rock Auto. You wouldn't choose to spend 30, 50, or even 100% more for the same parts. Why would you? You can go to Rock Auto, which is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. They have everything you could need. Brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, or even new carpet. Go to their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. So, rockauto.com. Go there right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck and write locked on in there. How did you hear about us, box? So they know that we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need, rockauto.com. All right, so let's go on to fan tracks and have a look at the settings in setting up a league and how that all can uh, can roll. So what you need to do on fan tracks. So at the top, you go to games, that games menu, click NBA. So I'm already on that screen. Let's do create league here. So I'm going to go through all of the, of the settings. So create league. So there's the different things you can do. Total points, head-to-head points daily, head-to-head points weekly. So they're all points leagues. Total points is just at the end of the season, Whoever, whichever team has scored the most points is on top of the standings. It's not about a week-to-week matchup. Head-to-head points daily, head-to-head points weekly. It's your standard points format, except daily means daily lineup changes. Weekly means weekly lineup changes. Roto is a rotisserie format. I'm not going to go into all the details of what Roto is, but it's category-based. Um, a head-to-head each category, we, we should know what that is. Head-to-head most categories is... Um, when you have those categories, but basically you get you get a win or a loss each week. So you just need more categories than your opponent and you get a win. Each category doesn't count as a win, which is what it does in head-to-head each category. And then there's a best ball format, which is no moves at all. Basically, you go in and you draft and that's it. And then usually with the setup with best ball, it's a points league format. And you have, say, 20 guys on your team. And at the end of each week, the system automatically works out who your best 10 scores were. Those numbers are interchangeable, of course. And then those your best 10 goes against your opponent's best 10. Um, and you win that week that way. There are different ways to set up best where you can do it end of the season, you can do whatever, but that's one of their formats. So let's go through and do the most popular format for fantasy, which it is, despite all you points league guys who play, it is head-to-head each category. That is the most popular. It is followed by points head-to-head. But let's go through uh, and look at head-to-head each category as a setup system. So let's uh, let's set up a league name, Locked On Fantasy team name. Let's call myself Joshy. Um, le- league type, redraft, keeper, dynasty. We've spoken about what the difference in dynasty and keeper is. Dynasty is keep every player. Keeper is you have to choose which players you keep. Redraft is just one season only. Live online draft, you can do an automated draft or an online draft is where you do the draft, say, in a room with all your mates, and then you go in and enter the results later on. Or live online auction, which we can we can do. Let's just do it as a standard draft for now. Entry fee, set how much you want people to, to uh, be charged. Promo code, we don't have one of those. And league description, um, test for podcast. All right, so let's hit the submit button. And then we go into starting our league. So your fan track's generating everything. All right, there it is. Congratulations. Your Locked On Fantasy League has been created. Let's make this maybe a little bit bigger on the screen for you guys. Bring those sides in there. Make that a little bit a little bit bigger. All right. So the thing we want to do is customize league. All right, so we can also we can bring that in a bit more there as well. All right. All right. Let's make that. There we go. That's a little bit of a better setup, isn't it? Actually, let's bring that down as well. We don't need to see that. And really... There we go. 
looking lovely. All right, there we go. So let's go through and change the settings here on Fantrack. So we've got, um, you know, this is just basically what we already put in. And if you go down here, you can see the different uh, scoring types. You've got rotisserie, points-based, head-to-head points, head-to-head -head most categories. But we're doing head-to-head -head each category. We've already done that. So let's go to teams and schedules. All right, so here is where we can come in and we can choose how many, uh, how many teams we've got uh, on that list. So there's all the teams there. All right. Number of teams in league, you just go through and choose. On fan tracks, you can obviously have an absolute shit ton of leagues. So you just go through and choose uh, teams in your league, however many you want. And there are all the spots there. So what you can do is you can use this code here. All right. And if, if you can just use, that's a link and you can join the league. Or you can go through and put everyone's uh, individual emails into all of these areas there. You click the send invitation box. Put your little note down here join my league and then if you hit the button down the bottom of the screen there it said join my league and the send email invitations and save and then it will send those out to everyone who is uh who you've invited to league or you can just do that send that link out and you can see there's a bunch of tabs here as well so we go from teams to divisions so you can add a division and then you can split them up that way. Then you can change your schedule along those lines. So let's go through and let's actually, let's just add some teams just to make sure that we've got a number of teams in the league so that we can show how all those features work. All right, so I'll push save after that screen and that'll put all those teams in there eventually when, uh, when Fantrax. All right, so there's all my teams. All right, so if we go here to divisions, or if I go here, I can go uh, add division. Let's do west division, and let's do east because I'm boring. So I can do add team number seven. So just save that. So generally, if after you add something on a on fan tracks, you want to save so that those things come in. So add seven to east, add two to east, add four to west. All right, so you can see how that's all going. Add five to west and split your teams up into divisions. Nine to west, six to west, 10 to west, and let's just get that. Then let's add everyone else to the Eastern Conference. All right, so there's our conferences. So we'll save, save that as well. And that's a way you can split them up. And especially if you've got um, a larger league, it is a good idea to do that. Then you can just play the schedule through your divisions only. So let's go to the schedule tab. So it tells you here, yeah, what's your start date? Your league stats begin accumulating on the 19th of October, and they go through to the 10th of April, which is the last day of the season. Now, as I've said multiple times, you do not want your season to end on the last day of the season. I wouldn't want it to end on the 3rd of April either. I would probably say 27th of March or 20th of March is the best time to end. Let's do 20th of March. Now, you can do this as well. Merge, merge first N periods of the season, which this number here is N. Meaning sometimes like if the season started on a Friday, you wouldn't want to have a three-day matchup. But generally the NBA season starts, yes, yeah, so we're starting on a Tuesday, so that's fine. So you, you get six days. So we don't need to merge any of those first, um, first days of the year. Merge the last two periods of the season. Now that, that can be something that's interesting, but because we're ending on a Sunday, we don't need to merge those last two periods. Merge the All-Star break, that's a great idea, meaning that that, that week before All-Star game and that week after All-Star game are put into one fantasy matchup, which gives you basically the equivalent of one week. Scoring period interval, you can do daily, weekly, semi-weekly, bi-weekly, monthly. So that makes it interesting. And there's always with these things, little question marks here where you can click. So there you go. For the, for the common Monday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday setup, select semi-weekly. So that's, yeah, you can do... Multiple matchups a week, that means. So you have four days, Monday to Thursday, and then a three-day matchup as well. In general, weekly is what we do. It's our standard Monday to Sunday matchup. So scoring period to start on a Monday, but you can choose whatever day you want. And then we have scheduling strategy. Matchups divided evenly regardless of division or all matchups within division, as I mentioned before. And then other thing you can do, number of matchups each team plays each scoring period, which again, in a deeper league, 20 teams, 30 teams, is really, really interesting because you don't have 30 weeks. You don't have 20 weeks in a fantasy season. You might have 14 weeks or 15 weeks or whatever it is. But you can do it so that each week, your team plays um, multiple opponents. So when we go to look at this, if I choose two here, I know I've only got a 12-team league going on, but if I choose two, that means that my team, Josh, might play team number one, and play team number two during the same week. Now, it's it, it 
it can be not harder necessarily, but if you're doing that sort of setup in a daily changes league, it can be hard to try and you know, stream in to win two separate matchups. It does work better in a weekly setup or in a points league setup because in the end, you're just in a weekly, you can't change midweek and in a points league, you're just trying to get the most points. So it doesn't actually matter what your opponent's doing. But it is a good way to make sure that everyone plays everyone at least once in those deeper leagues, which you can do. Playoffs. Playoffs? All right, so you can choose whether you have playoffs or not. Um, Here, select your last scoring period in the regular season. So I went through and made my last uh, week be the 20th of March. So I want three weeks of playoffs. So I want that week to be a playoff. So I'm going to make my last regular season scoring period the 27th of February, which is the week coming out of the All-Star game. But the other thing you can do, merge all playoff periods, meaning you can have two-week playoffs, which, again, is something that I do highly recommend. So you can come, come in here and uh, click that to make it um, so that each playoff week is two weeks. Now, if you're doing that, you probably only want to have two, two matchups of playoffs, give it four total weeks, so you could do that, and then make it so that yeah, your season ends there. You know, teams qualifying for playoffs four, you know, save that. And that'll, that'll give you the, the idea. So your season ends on February 13th, and then you have um, four weeks of playoffs. First round is two matches. Second round is two matches. You can also do it. I'm pretty sure if I if I went to choose and said, all right, so everything has turned into, so you can see two-week matchups there for the playoffs. If I went and changed that, all right, back to single weeks, and wanted to do, say, a five-week playoff matchup with six teams, meaning the first round of the playoffs is one week, and then the second round is two weeks, and the third round is two weeks, you can do that. And and the way that you do that is, so we use that. That's our Those two there are our grand final matchup, 20 and 21. 18 and, uh, sorry, I better bring that on the screen for you guys to see. Um, 18 and, uh, 18 and, sorry, 20 and 21. It keeps going as I move the screen. 18 and so 20 and 21 is your grand final. 18 and 19 is your semi final, and 17 is your first round. So if we do, we end on 16. There are too many rounds of playoffs for the number of teams. All right, that's fine. We'll change that. Um, so we'll do merge playoffs, and we want six teams in. Let's see if this works. Now this might have changed, but I'm pretty sure this should work if we if we run it that way. And let's have a look how that how that worked. So we've got playoffs of two weeks there, two weeks there, and then one week there at week 17. But I don't think that, did that end up working? Anyway, I'm not sure that worked properly. But anyway, that's that's getting way too detailed into how you can work that out. Now, matchups. Here's where you can decide who plays who each week. Generally, you just want to generate this by yourself. Like you know, automatically, you don't need to. But if you need, you have a rivalry round or something and you want to set up how we, each of the matchups go, that's how you set them up. And then consolation bracket, if you want to have one, you can generate one there. I generally don't believe that they're necessary. I think that they actually just create more chaos in a fantasy league, but that's not something that I would be uh, I would be doing. Player pool. So you can make things really interesting here. You can include college basketball if you want. You can take out all of the Western Conference. You can make it Eastern Conference only. You can delete certain teams. It's not something I'd usually recommend, but it is something you can do. So uh, that's fine. Leave. Yep. Uh, we don't need to stay on that screen. So let's go through to um, setting up our rosters. Total roster size. I believe the default roster size should be 14. But before I go through and tell you any more about that, I'm going to tell you about Bet Online, which is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your sports action. Baseball season's in full swing, and you can track all the action at Bet Online. Get all the latest news, odds, and info for all of your sporting needs, including Major League Baseball, NBA, NHL, when, when that's back, and your UFC MMA action. Before the next pitch, head over to Bet Online on your laptop or mobile device and check out all the great sporting news, sign up bonuses, and contest information. Don't sit on the sidelines anymore, as this is your chance to get into the game as teams prep for their runs to the playoffs. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit using the promo code Locked On. Bet Online are your online sportsbook experts. Okay, so we're on Roster's page here. Roster size, I think 14 should be the default. If you are playing a 12-man league, you should have 14 players on your roster. I think if you go to a, a shallower league with 10 men, I think you should be having 15 to 16 players on a roster. Active players at 10, I think, is totally fine with four bench guys. This is a standard setup, but you can go and choose uh, whatever number you want for your roster. 
You can have injured reserve players. And I think, again, we're going to have COVID problems again this year. I think you need to have um, a multiple, uh, multiple injured sides. To me, it's no fun to have a scenario where I have James Harden on my team. And then the second round, I drafted Jimmy Butler, for example. And then they're both out for two months. And then my third round pick is Miles Turner, and then he's out for three months. So my top three guys are out. That's shit already. But then I've got to decide, well, I've got to drop them. I've, I can't afford to hold on to them because I've got no bench spots. And then you know who's able to pick up those players? The teams at the top of the standings who probably don't have as many injury problems. That's why they're at the top. And they have the ability to stash one of those players, and therefore their team becomes better. So the rich get richer. It's a stupid system. You should be out. If you have a guy that you drafted, you put them in injured reserve. And I'd, oh yeah, but it makes you make decisions. Bullshit. It just helps the good teams get stronger. And nobody wants that. So that when playoff team time comes, the team that was sitting comfortably on top of the standings can then activate James Harden to bring in who they got for free off the waiver wire or Jimmy Butler or Miles Turner, whoever it is. Nobody wants that. You want your team to have that ability to hold on to that guy that you drafted. So you need injured reserve slots. I think I think for this year again, three at minimum, even go four. I don't have a problem with that. Minor leagues is more something for dynasty leagues, but it enables you to have a situation where you can stash players for that are either under a certain age or have played a certain number of NBA games, and you can create the um, the rules behind that as well, where you can stash them on a roster that doesn't doesn't count to your major your your regular roster. So you can you know, do uh, we can have three minor league players, and then you can see uh, I'll bring it up there for you on the screen. Minor league eligibility. Um, yeah, any player can be put into minors. You can do a simple, only real minor league players, which we don't have minor leagues in, in the NBA or advanced minor leagues. So we can come through and choose the different rules, yeah, real life status, age, or games played. And we can yeah, put all those things in. So if a player's played less than 10 NBA games at the start of the season, that they can um, be included on your minors roster. So then, all right, so that's fine. Um, you can also have these other weird rules here. Like you've, you've got to have a certain number of rookies, minimum max, uh, of rookies, which if it's got that little yellow star means it's a premium feature and you need to pay a premium league fee for it. But you can go in there and say you must have X number of rookies on your team. Um, you can have also max number of periods a player can be started in an entire season. I've never seen a league use this, but I am guess it's saying, so you, you've got your top end players, but you can only start them six times for the year. It's a weird setting, but I wouldn't want to use it personally. Now we come into actually selecting your roster. We know the standard is point guard, shooting guard, small forward, power forward, center with guard forward um, uh, as as the, the additional things and then three utilities. That is the standard, but you can mix around with that. Now, for, for the love of God, do not set up a league that has A, a maximum cap on the amount of uh, players at a certain position, ESPN defaults, where you can only have four centers. Jack Armstrong. A Yahoo default league need, means you have to start two centers. Get that garbage out of here! It's ridiculous. Those settings need to go. You should be starting, as I said, one point guard, add. One shooting guard, add. One small forward, thank you. One power forward, thank you. One guard, one forward. All right, there's your standard and three flex. There is your standard roster. Let's save that. Let's take that... Okay, I've added a premium feature. Good for me. Let's take that uh, those minor leagues off. We don't need those. Um, but you can do whatever you want with these positions. I just highly, highly recommend that you do not have you do not have uh, multiple centers or a cap on on the positions. Now, this max games played is for rotisserie leagues where you would set up. Um, a games limit. So you know, 82 games at your point guard slot, 82 games at your shooting guard slot, and then flex, you do three times that. So 246 is what you would have for those three flex spots. Then you've got this section down here, you know, prevent any transaction causing a roster to become illegal. So always only for total roster size or you know, anything like that. So there's, that's in terms of trades. You can only make this trade if, you've, if the trade won't be legal to go through. 
Exceeding max reserves will make roster illegal and such claims, trades, drafting will be denied. That's a setting you can do. So if you ha don't have enough players in your active roster and you've benched everybody, you can make it so that you can't make any moves if that's the case. You also can make it so that rosters become illegal. You have to have um, you have to have a certain amount. So you've got 10 starters, but you've got to say you always got to have at least seven blokes in those roster spots. You can't just bench everybody. Or you can even do it so that you've got to have you know, 10 guys there. Otherwise, it becomes illegal. Then you get an illegal roster notification, and then your commissioner can penalize you, penalize you for that sort of thing. Um, injured reserve players count towards roster limitations. You should never select that. And allow COVID opt-out players to be moved to injured reserves. I'm not sure that the NBA is going to have any COVID opt-out players, but that's just the way you can do it. Also, the box there allows suspended players to be moved to injured reserve. I, I believe you should be able to do that as well. I hate that Yahoo, again, we're not Oh, they got suspended. They didn't get injured. But that's not anything to do with the fantasy managers. And you're just penalizing a fantasy manager that got John Collins or DeAndre Ayton two years ago. Oh, it's had it. Well, you couldn't have known that they were going to get suspended. So why then do I have to drop them because they got suspended? They should be able to go on injured reserve. And the easy way to make... Oh, they're not injured. Cool. Let's just make it inactive reserve. And then just change the name of that I. And then we don't have to have that absolutely petty argument about that they're not injured. So why would we put them there? Um, preferences... Yeah, I don't really need to change too much here. Only allow players to play at an eligible position. Yeah, I don't think you need to change any of that stuff, to be honest. Let's go into scoring. And this is where we come in and you change your standard categories. And we've got all of our regular categories there, plus everything else that um, yeah, Fantrax offers. Double-doubles, double-doubles only, ejections, field goal percentage, which is one there. Field goals missed, field goals attempted, games played, games started, minutes played, uh, rebounds per game, a whole bunch of different stats. And then you add them in there, but you can also weight them. So you can do, well, you know, I, I think that that's great having this as a category, but assist category is actually worth two wins now. I don't know why you would do it, but you can make assists worth two wins. So if you win assists, you get two category wins for the week. Uh, you also have... Um, uh, advanced categories, which are a whole bunch of different things that you've got here. You know, blocks, shots blocked by an opponent, a whole bunch of different um, adjusted field goal percentage. Um, what else have we got here? Efficiency numbers, effective field goal percentage, free throw rate, um, net free throws, a whole bunch of game winning buzzer beaters. What a weird uh, category that is. Points per shot, true shooting percentage, a whole bunch of categories that you can have. Um, there with the advanced categories. So if you click here, you can show all the available scoring categories and it will tell you about um, uh, what, what they all mean. But yeah, that's going a little bit far. Min max. All right, so you can set how many games played for the week. Yeah, I think a good, with a 10-man active roster, if you want to limit the games played for a week, 38 is a good number. You could also make it 40. The lower that number that you make, the less important your bench becomes. So that really, and this is why it's super important to understand your league settings, because if you if you have this, well, you can only play 30 games a week and you're in an auction draft, then there's no point getting a balanced format because your bench guys don't play. Right? They, just, they just don't play. And some of your starters you have to sit as well. So you're better off investing that money in the higher end guys. But if you don't have a games limit, if you've got a 45 games limit, then it's, then it's fine. You can also have uh, limits on field goals attempted. Generally, you want to do a minimum so that make sure people set their lineups and they aren't trying to just go out there and um, you win percentages or you've got a league that's heavily based on ratios or turnovers or negative categories. So they make it they've got a, you, you, their team has to attempt 300 field goals for the week or whatever it is. It's, there's a thing here. If maximum has been met or exceeded, what do you do? So you can do nothing if the team accumulates no stats and gets a loss. So if you go over the games, you can just automatically get a zero. So they've got to be really vigilant. Or what you do is the team stops accumulating stats after that number. And the same thing with the minimum. If you don't reach that minimum, you just get a loss for every scoring category or the team gets a loss for each average stat. So that the minimum is more important when you are using average stats, not cumulative stats. And by that, there's a rebounds per game, a points per game option on fan tracks. Meaning it's not like I got 700 points and my opponent got 600 points, therefore I won. It's how many points per game did my team average for the week, but there's got to be minimums uh, put in there to uh, to make sure that you don't just play LeBron one game and then sit everyone else down. That's what the point of, of that is. You've got the game schedule here as well, which is where you can set up who plays there. Don't, don't need to worry too much about that. And then preferences, we also don't need to worry about that. Let's go into transactions and periods. Here's where you can, uh, owners enter own lineups. I don't know why anyone else would do it. 
Custom scoring periods, you can change that. So you can just set your own scoring periods. You want to have two-week matchups all through the season, you go in there and you can change that. Lineups and transactions executed daily. So this is your know, daily changes. Semi-weekly, so you can make a lineup change midweek, weekly, every two weeks, whatever it is, however you want to set your lineups. That's how you set it. Here's where your lineups are locked. A set amount of time before each player's game of the day. So you can do it so that the early games, the lineups lock when those guys play. And then when the late guys play, you can still make changes to those when the um, before that game plays. Or you can do it so that it happens before the first game of the day. And here's where you change the time of where that locks. And then ignore postponed canceled games when determining lineup lock times. I think that's a great idea and super important. Trades. Owners propose their own trades. Sure. Maximum trades per team. I don't know why you would have a maximum, but here you go. Trade deadline. Very important to put that in there. Put it in before the fantasy playoffs start. Whenever that is, put it in. Let's make it you know, 27th of January. Days to vote. Let's get rid of all voting. Trade voting system. Commissioner is how we should do it. No, no voting. No, absolutely no voting from league members. Allow trades before the draft. That means you trade draft picks. Sure. Trades during the draft. That can get a bit messy, but sure. Trades across multiple periods. Um, not really, I'm not really sure exactly what that is meaning. Let's, what, what does it mean? Oh, it's when a player gets locked. If a player has played and then the other player hasn't play, played, um, you, can you still do a trade? I think, um, yeah, it, it can create some weird stuff. So in general, you don't want, it, uh, don't want it done. Allow trades to execute even if rosters become illegal. I don't think that you want that to be ticked. I think you want to make it so that the trades have to go through um, if the roster, uh, the roster has to be legal. Allow trading of draft picks, and then that's a, a setting we can go to later. Then there's the claims and drops, and you can see it's a massive screen claims and drops because you can set up all the different um, all the different uh, ways that you can go through everything here. So owners perform their own claims. Yes, use waiver wire. How many claims for the season? How many claims for the week? Allow claims drops before the draft. There's no need for that. Yeah, there's some premium features there, preventing claims for injured players, which is an interesting thing, which again is something you can check if you don't want to have that injured reserve slot, which again, I highly recommend. A whole bunch of different things. And you can have yeah, your, what's your free agency system, free for all or bidding, which is the fab process, which is again, something I highly recommend. What days are those bids processed? Um, and then you go through and there's a, a budget that you can set as well for, for your bidding. So the bidding system here, um, is it eBay style bidding, which means basically when bids are processed, the winning bidder pays the price of the second highest bid. So if I bid $100 and someone else bids 50, then I only pay $51. I don't recommend that sort of bidding, but it is a way you can do it. What time are they processed? Um, you can do situations where guys who are on waivers need to go through bids, but then if they pass through waivers, you can just add them at any time. And that's what all of these settings are. There's a whole bunch of things there to set different ways that you can set up your acquisition of players. Ensure 23 plus hour waiver period, meaning you can't just drop someone and then have them added straight back in within a day. Waiver churning is a way um, to prevent you just dropping someone and adding that same player back. And there's a whole bunch of settings that you can change there. So let's go through to salaries and contracts. Again, in a redraft league, you're probably not going to deal with this, but you can use real-life player salaries. And then in dynasty formats, you can use contracts and set them up for automatic pay raises and all that sort of stuff. So if I set all this, yeah, here's all the different contract types that people can have, cap hit penalties for cutting players, what happens when they go to the bench, contract extensions, all that sort of stuff. But in a redraft league, we're not going to use these sort of things. And salaries, you can make it so that the amount that they get bid for in an auction becomes their salary. What's the minimum salary? What's the minimum off a waiver wire? Um, do the players on your reserve or injury reserve count towards your salary cap? Can you do you have a salary cap? All of these different settings get uh, get brought up, but in general, you don't want to uh, use that in a redraft format. So here's your draft: online, regular, and slow auction, standard, automated, whatever. All right, include you know, put your draft date in. Let's set it for here. What time? How many rounds? What is your time limit per pick? So if you want to do a slow draft, six hours per pick. And then you just get a notification before your pick. You jump on, you make your pick, and then the next guy goes. It might take a bit of time, but it's great if you're all in different time zones and you've got time to do it. You can also have a sleep time. So if you are all in the same time time zone and you know, it gets to 11 o'clock at night, you can say, well, the draft, the timer stops, and then it resumes the next morning at 8 a.m. or whatever it is, and then we get back onto that clock. You know, how many times can a player 
have an auto pick before they uh, get put onto auto, or how many, how many times can they let the timer run out? All that gets set there. Draft order, are we doing non uh, or non serpentine, which is not not snake draft, just a random order, or are we doing snake draft? Um, and then you can create your own draft order. You can also do it so that you can set up a third round reversal draft as well, which is a great way of setting things up. It's not available on Yahoo or on ESPN, but, and it does take a little bit of work to get it done here, but you can do it and choose manual. And then you can go in here and do manually edit draft picks per round so that you can set up that third round reversal draft. So that is, that is something that you can do on here. And it, what it means is the team that picks first in round two also picks first in round three, and then we go into regular uh, snake draft after that. So that is a way of setting up your uh, your draft order there. But generally, you want it to be randomized, and you can randomize it here, or you can randomize it through any other system that you have, and then you can set it up with the different ways that you can go about things here. So if we go through to the next uh, the next tab, we have got uh, prizes. Fantrax has a, a, a treasurer where you can use that to collect all the entry fees, and you do it. Yeah, you know, what's the entry fee? Um, you can set it here. You can also have prices for if how much you have to pay each time you add someone, each time you activate someone. I don't think you should have any any fees for any of that shit. League entry only. Um, transaction fees, you know, that's, that's garbage. And then you can put in your prize pool so that at the end of the year, it will automatically pay out the prizes into each person's uh, tri- uh, fan tracks account. So that's how we do all that. Then you go through to the miscellaneous page, which is the last page here. Uh, allow trading of draft picks. Yeah, how many future years, which is more for Dynasty League, but how many draft picks yeah, I can trade all 14 rounds this year. Tiebreakers, how do you decide who wins a matchup? Home team gets the win is a way you can do it. Category tiebreakers, yeah, home team gets the win. Playoff tiebreakers, who gets the win in that sort of sitting. Standings tiebreakers, who gets the... Um, who gets the the top spot in the standings, depending if there's tie. They're all very important to set up. Here, you can just have a document with your constitution, type it in here, and there's these things like, is this league viewable to the public? All right, so that is all of those settings there. Um, I think it is really... If it, the main takeaway I think you should have from this, and it's been a long show, if there's anything more you want expanded upon, you can tweet at me or drop it in the comments below. The most important thing to me is have um, in a standard league, I think you want 14 man rosters, 10 active, four bench. The big, bigger the bench, I think slightly having, uh, sorry, try again. Having a slightly bigger bench is probably better than having a shallower one. I think you need minimum two, probably three injured reserve slots. Auction draft, better than snake draft, but a lot longer and harder to execute. I think using FAB for your waiver wire rather than first in best dressed is the best way to do it. Definitely the fairest way to do it. No commission, uh, no uh, owner voting on um, trades, always commissioner votes for approval. And the commissioner doesn't approve, disapprove things based on fairness. He just looks and sees if there's cheating or not. And if there isn't cheating, then the trade goes through, not for you to police other people's teams. Um. And your yeah, roster positions, don't have two centers. Don't have a cap on a specific position. Don't have, you can only have four centers on your roster. These are, you know, in, in your categories, I think you're yeah, trying to keep things as simple as possible as well, generally is, is pretty good. Don't use double doubles. Don't use triple doubles. Don't use total rebounds and offensive rebounds together. If you're going to use offensive rebounds, take away total rebounds and make it defensive rebounds because they're double ups. Don't have free throws made as a category. Don't have field goals made as a category unless you're going to remove the points category because again it's a double up, um, and they're probably the major the major points when uh, when talking about these leagues. I hope this was useful for you guys um, in terms of going through the settings and looking at ways to set up a league. Remember, I will drop that link below for you to join leagues this year, uh, and don't forget to follow this podcast: Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and on Odyssey while on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up, leave a comment down below, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya.